Kale chips. This is my favorite preparation of kale. If it's done right, it'll come out real tender. So I inspect my leaves first, make sure they're nice and clean. I remove the leaf from the spine. I like to just tear it with my hands. I start with the younger, more tender leaves. This is a good example of the ideal kale chip here. I'll just take the whole top off of this one. Remove the, the spine of the leaf there. This works with any type of kale. This is the lacinato kale or dino kale as some people call it because it looks kind of like a dinosaur, I guess. But it'll work with red kale or curly kale. You can make kale chips out of any kind of kale. So what I have left over, you don't want to use this, it's too chewy. Once I have my kale into uh, bite-sized pieces, I'll place it in a bowl and I'll use some extra virgin olive oil. Not too much. You can always add more if you need it. I add a small pinch of salt. I always use Himalayan salts in my kitchen. Season from high up so you get an even distribution and not all the salts in one place. So I'll come through, make sure that every piece is coated with olive oil. And you can use other types of oil. Here's the part where you can really make a kale chip that falls apart in your mouth. You massage the kale, you can hear it. Massage the kale so that you're breaking down the cell walls. I'm really squeezing it. Kale is pretty tough when it's in its raw form. So I wanna squeeze it and I'm gonna break down those cell walls and really just weaken it so that the final product is more tender. Don't use too much salt because the cooking process is going to shrink the kale down a little bit and sort of concentrate the salt content. Spread them out on your sheet tray. This is a stainless steel sheet tray. I never use aluminum products in my kitchen. Anything that comes in contact with food, I don't like it to be aluminum. Just spread them out so that they can uh, crisp up easily. They're not gonna get soggy overlapping one another. I'm putting this on my convection pellet grill today. You could put it in an oven, 300 degrees, 10 to 12 minutes. It will go a little faster if you're using a convection oven, but keep an eye and, and um, maybe poke them and see when they get nice and crispy. You don't want them to get brown at all. That's taking it too far and they'll take on a real burnt bitter taste but you don't want them to be soft and soggy. So wait till that water has evaporated and it'll crisp up real nicely, just like a chip. Here is our finished product. You can see they've shrunk up quite a bit and I did overcook slightly to my taste, but they still came out really great. Yes, delicious. This one is a little bit on the, on the wet side, so you can see. I had it towards the edge of my grill, so the Half of them were overcooked and half were under, but you can see this one's nice and crunchy, like a chip, it'll just break. And this one's a, a little bit more moisture retained here.